a box with an open top, just like I constructed here in front of you, is to be formed uh, from a rectangular piece of cardboard with dimensions 10 by 18. We're going to cut a square from each corner and fold up the sides. So no top to it. Find the largest volume that the box can have. Sounds like a tough problem, right? Let's make it easy. I'm going to divide my problem up into four parts. I'm going to start by modeling the problem. I start with a rectangular piece of cardboard. What are the dimensions of that cardboard? 10 by 18. Look at how smart you guys are. What are we doing to that? What are you going to do to it? You're going to cut the corners out. Okay, I'll draw like some dashed, perforated edges. I use the word perforated. Is that a new word for people? Or I use the word loathe this morning. Somebody, somebody said, did you say... Yeah, somebody said, did you say love? I'm like, I definitely did not say love. I said loathe. They're like, what is loathe? I'm like, oh, let me tell you. So we got like say X and X and X and X. So these are square corners that I'm cutting out. They're all going to be the same. Okay? They're all going to be the same. Okay, I modeled the problem. At least I got an idea of what's going on. So what's what's driving the problem? What's the whole goal here? Awesome. Largest volume. So sounds like I should write a formula for volume. volume. How do we find volume of a of a shape of a shape like this? Length times width times height or base times height. And the base would be the length times the width, right? So I'm just gonna write length times width times height. Three dimensions, so three variables. Dimensions, good job. Okay, so um, three different variables, that's a big problem. It's a really big problem. And so we, we need three different equations. We need one for length, one for width, one for height. Oh, this is getting difficult. Maybe we should just quit. Oh, man. Length, well, the length of the rectangle is 18. So the length of the box is going to be more than 18, less than 18, or 18? Yeah, it's going to be less because we're going to cut off each corner, right? Yeah, nice job. Way to go, Marissa. 18 minus 2x. Smarty pants up here. Yeah, she says, says 18, and I'm going to cut an x off from each edge. So it's 18 minus 2x. So what's the width going to be? 10 minus 2x. Nice job, Ella. Uh-oh. See who's smart here. Now I'm going to take and fold up the side. So how tall is it going to be? It's going to be x tall. Man, you guys are good. Look at that. What I just did is I now don't have three different variables. I now have one variable, don't I? And x represents the dimension of what you're going to cut or the height. So we need an equation. We can do that because we're super smart. Volume is equal to x times 18 minus 2x times 10 minus 2x. I'm going to put all these three expressions in for length, for width, for height, and multiply them together. Suppose that the, the dimension that I cut here is x. So when you fold it up, then the height is x. See it? Very good. All right. Let's multiply this out. Negative 2x times negative 2x. Times x? 4x cubed. Sweet. Um, okay. Negative 2x times 10 and negative 2x times 18. Well, negative 2x times 10, that's negative 20x. And then negative 2x times 18 is negative 36x. Negative 56x times x is negative 56x squared. Now we got to do the 18 times 10. What's 18 times 10? Times x is 180x. True or false? That makes a parabola. So we can't use the negative b divided by 2a. Why does it not make the parabola? It's a squiggly. It's a cube. Yep. Yep. I, I like your math term, squiggly. So, uh... So we've got a cube here, so we can't do the negative b divided by 2a. That, that whole like vertex thing only works if you have a parabola. 
So, but people will try to use negative b over 2a for all sorts of things on the test. So I get a square root function, I'll use negative b divided by 2a. And I, that's why I grab the spoon and stab in my eye. I'm like, stop. Um, so anyway, uh, we need our calculator. Take out your calculator. It's such a good thing that we learn how to use these. What's that? Oh, he did. All right. Timothy used my calculator trick during chemistry today. I like it. Interdisciplinary work. All right, yep, we're giving a round of applause. Except he broke the dress code today. Wearing an ugly shirt. Here we go. We go 4x cubed. Minus 56x squared. Plus 180x. There we have it. And now so that we all have the same viewing window, I'm going to make sure that what we do is we press zoom 6. Zoom 6. And there's my shape. That's not very helpful for us, is it? Would everybody agree we like to see higher and see lower? So instead of just pressing zoom in and zoom out, which I don't think is very helpful, we're going to help you think about the context of the problem, okay? This is where people, uh, sometimes they, they, they just they don't sustain the full attention. You really want to focus during this part, and it should make sense to you, okay? Watch what happens here. What's that? It's so bugging out. So, um, all right. So everybody say hi, Marissa. Hi. Marissa did a wonderful thing, which is she pressed enter while she was graphing. What that does is it pauses the graph. So when I press enter, it will continue to graph it again, and there comes up the graph. Boom. Okay, so if you press enter, it will pause the graph. If you press on or off, it will stop the graph, okay? All right, so here we go. Where, where was I? Graphing, you need to pay something really important. Oh, you need to pay attention here. As we look at the graph, look at this. Where does this cross the x-axis? One, two, three, four, five. five. You see that? And then where else does it cross? Six, five. Eight, five and nine, everybody see that? Watch, folks. What's the biggest x value that you could cut from this side? Five, because you would have five and five, that would make ten, right? What's the biggest x value you could cut from this side? Nine. So, so those would, if you cut the whole thing, that would produce a volume of zero. Does that make sense? So that's why it crosses at those spots. But we want to see the top part, okay? So uh, we're going to like Caitlin go today. Caitlin, you're, you're going to cut something off here. Now, we already said the most you could cut off is five. What, would, what size box would you like to cut off? One by one, two by two, three by three, what do you want to cut off? Two. Two? She wants to cut off a two. Is that okay by everybody? Yep. So she cuts off a two. Do you agree that's going to be two units high when we fold it up? Times, if, if she cuts off a two here, how wide is the box going to be? Six. Six. And then how long is the box going to be? Fourteen. Fourteen. Everybody see that? So... So, so, so she, we're just trying to get a general idea, and this is why. Look at this function. We have an x value, and then our y value is volume. The y value represents the volume, and we're, we're trying to figure out how do we even see the graph. So what are we doing? We're just coming up with a volume. If we cut 2 off, there will be 2 by 6 by 14. What's 2 by 6 by 14? Let's go to our calculator. 2 times 6 times 14. So it looks like you get a volume. So our volume is not in the thousands. It's not in the tens. It's in the hundreds. So let's adjust our window to the hundreds. So when you go into your window, I'm going to change my Y value. I'm going to go up in the hundreds. I'm going to go like 400. You okay with 400? And then, uh, whoops, so, and then negative 400. And then I'm going to put a scale. That means a tick mark every 100 units. And now let's see if we get a better graph. So we guys complain about not getting a good graph. Think about the problem a little bit. Now do you see a maximum? Oh, yeah. You didn't, you didn't even get that? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll come over and check it out in just a second. Okay. Now, does this shape have a maximum? It does. What do I do with my calculator to find a maximum? 
Second trace. Which one do you select? Four. Number four, maximum. Look at you guys go. And I go over that maximum. What? Okay, let's do the maximum piece, and then we're going to come around and help a few people, okay? So I'm at the top. What do I do now? So I go to the left, press enter, then I move to the right and press enter and enter on guess. And it gives me the following. Remember, I have an X value and I have a V of X value or volume value. And I get 2.06. I get 168.13. Can somebody tell me, and I'll come around and help you, what the heck does 2.06 mean? That's what you cut, right? That's how much you cut. 2.06 by 2.06. What does 168.13 represent? The volume. What is the question asking for? It says find the largest volume. 168.13 uh, inches cubed. That's our answer. It does not ask for the dimensions. It asks for the largest volume. I'm Okay, one more problem today. Tomorrow we finish uh, the rest up. Here we go. Find the dimensions that give the largest area for a rectangle whose base is on the x-axis and whose corners are on the parabola. Y equals 12 minus 3x squared. Oh, my goodness. Can somebody tell me what does the graph of Y equals 12 minus 3x squared look like? Upside down parabola. Upside down parabola. Shift it up to positive 12. Excellent work. And if you factor this, you would get 3 times 4 minus x squared. Where does it cross the x-axis at? Good. Negative 2 and positive 2. Everybody see how that factors of 4 minus 2 and 4 plus 2? Okay. That's my parabola. Everybody okay with that? I'm going to put a rectangle inside of that, and the base of the rectangle will be on the x-axis. And the corner of the rectangle will be on the parabola. Not really drawn to scale, but there we go. And all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to call this, uh, to try to give you guys some help as we look at this, I'm going to call that XY. I'm going to call that XY. Okay. So, What's driving the problem? What, what is the goal? Largest area. So we need a formula for area. Length times width, or in this case, I'm going to write base times height only because they talk about base being here. So uh, just using multiple uh, meanings, so, so you can feel free to choose what you want. So I got two different variables, so I need, I need two equations. I need base equals, I need height equals. And this is where it becomes challenging for people to see this. So we're going to let you try to look at it. What is the length of the base? Very good. Less than 4. Give me an expression with a variable for the base. Oh, I, I heard x. Would everybody agree that this dimension here, like this length right here is x? It's the same as whatever coordinate that is? And then how for, Yeah, very good. So 2x. So you go x that way and x that way. Very good. Excellent. 2x. Yep. x this way, x that way. That's a total distance of 2x. What is the height? Y. So therefore, the area is equal to 2xy. Oh, no. Now I've got two variables again. I'm having a hard time seeing the base. Okay. Um, how far do I go this direction? X. How far do I go this direction? X. And X and X make 2x. Better? Awesome. We're not going all the way over there. Yes, yes, yes. And that's why we go y units high for our height. 
that it's a coordinate x, y. We're not really finding an area right now. We're trying to find the... An expression for area. Okay. And for that, you need to use a coordinate. Area. Yep. Okay. All right. How do I get rid of y? Somebody saw it third hour. I know you're going to see it. Yes, what do we plug in for y? Somebody. What? Yeah, good. Y equals 12 minus 3x squared. It's right there. <laughs> Look at that. Is that sweet? Look at that. It's just right there. So I'll distribute that 2x, and I get 24x. My 6x cubed. So is that a parabola? No. no. So can I do negative b divided by 2a? Can't do that. So I'm going to have to go to my calculator here. We know it makes it cubic. Uh, let's go to our calculator. We'll type it in. Good old calculator. Y equals like a 24x. I'm going to minus 6x cubed. And I'm going to press zoom 6. Zoom standard so we all see the same picture. It's a little bit better, right? Um, so did you press zoom standard? Zoom 6. Press zoom and then press 6. Okay, so I can't see the top, can I? So recognize that this area, I have an X value and I have an area value. The question is, what kind of area values am I coming up with? Am I coming up with values in the tens, in the hundreds, in the thousands? Okay, now I'm going to let my good friend Hannah, because it's her birthday, I'm going to let her choose. Hannah, we can only go over as far as two, so we can't go further than that. How far would you like to go over for this x value? How far do you want to go? Any number? Yeah, any number between 0 and 2. One. All right, I like 1. So suppose that x was 1. Can somebody tell me what would be the length of the base? It would be 2. And then how would we determine the height? One. Plug it in. We just plug it in. And you would have 12 minus 3, which is? 12 minus 3 is 9. So therefore, the area would be 18. So are we talking about areas in the tens, hundreds, or thousands? Tens. So in my window, I could go ahead and change my y values to say, I don't know, I'll go negative 50 by 50. I bet that will be enough to see it. I plug the 1 into this guy right here. So 3 times 1 squared is 3. 12 minus 3 is 9. So 1 was an x value that was chosen. So 1 this way and 1 that way makes 2. Now I look at the graph. Can I see the graph now? How do we find... What's that? Because you didn't change your scales. So you're not changing your scales. You're showing all sorts of tick marks. I'm showing them every 10 units. You're showing them every single unit. All right. I have a maximum. How do I find that maximum? Second, calculate. Number four. I go to the maximum. And I move to the left. That's why it says left bound. Then I move to the right, because it says right bound. I press enter on guess. And I get this. I get 1.15 and 18.48. I'll come around and help you in a second, but let's answer what this means and finish off this problem. What the heck does 1.15 mean? It's the x. So if it asks to find the dimensions, and if x is 1.15, 1 
then what's the base? 2.3. You take 1.15 and just plug it in right there and you get 2.3. How will I find the height? Plug what in? Do I plug in 2.3 for x or do I plug in 1.15 for x? Plug in the 1.5, so you get 12 minus 3 times 1.15 squared. And I get 8.03. So the x value is 1.15. The questions are what's the base and the height? The base is take 2 times x. So 1.15. 18.48 is what you would get if you took 2.3 times 8.03. That's your area. Yep. Five four is twice. Take out your worksheet. Let me show you what you can do and what you can't. 